Mark. Rolling. Camera. Action. Action. Andrea Friedman lives a life that most young women would envy. A successful actress who makes guest appearances in such shows as Chicago Hope and Baywatch and Touched by an Angel. She lives in an apartment in beautiful West LA, drives a BMW to work in a downtown law office, and spends evenings with friends or walking by the ocean with a boyfriend. And she is also an accomplished speaker, giving keynote addresses at conventions all over the world. It's a life to envy. This is Andrea's story. We said I have an extra chromosome in every cell on my body, which means that my 21st pair of chromosomes isn't a pair, it's triplets. In the early summer of 1970, Marge and Hal eagerly awaited the birth of their first child. Andrea Faye Friedman was born on June 1st. When I was told that uh, our child had Down syndrome, I, had, I didn't, didn't have a clue as to what that meant. And uh, when the doctor said, uh, don't let your wife see her or bond with her, uh, that was... Uh, just something I, I wouldn't listen to. The revelation that her small baby had Down syndrome hit Marge very hard indeed. When he told me, I was absolutely appalled. I rejected her completely. I said, finally, if, you know, I was really pretty awful. I said, well, if, if he insisted she had to live in our house, I wanted her to live at one end of the house with, it, with a, an aide, and I didn't want to see her again. And I went into a real nosedive, uh, just went, retired to bed and, and sobbed and cried for a whole weekend. We had a, a lovely German woman who had come for the weekend to uh, take care of Andrea while I was going through my trauma. And uh, I was sitting in the kitchen, and she went by with little Andrea peeping over her shoulder and opened, was trying to find the bathroom. Our house is long and narrow, hard to f remember which door goes where. And she opened the door uh, out onto, onto the patio, and she says, Oh, this house, I can never get the right door. And the whole thing was so, suddenly struck me as so funny that I started to laugh. And that, that broke you know, the trauma, and I, I held out my arms to Andrea, and Teddy said, well, if that's right, that's where she should be, in her mother's arms, and from then on, uh, we began to work with Andrea in a, po in a positive and affirmative way. The Friedmans quickly applied themselves to learning everything they could about Down syndrome, researching the most up-to-date medical and developmental opinions and advice. They ended up discarding almost all of it. They were determined to give and expect nothing less for Andrea than they would for any child. And then I would talk to her until at night my, I was hoarse. I would try to explain everything that was going on, what the sounds were outside, uh, what colors were, you know, every, everything I could think of, I just talked to her. Throughout Andrea's early childhood, her parents exposed her to as much experience and stimulation as they could, and they soon arrived at a formula. Andrea could do anything anyone else can. It will just take a little longer. I mean, there's a New Yorker cartoon with his baby sort of walleye <laughs> in bed, and the stuff toys and mobiles. <laughs> all around the crib, and that's exactly what Andrea's crib was like. Uh, I ran across a plastic fish tank at a toy store. A ba it's, a it's a bag. It was a ba pl heavy plastic bag. With, into which you could put live goldfish. <laughs> and so I, I thought that's perfect. And swimming so, in water. Swimming in water, yes. <laughs> yeah, so I put that in, in her crib. <laughs>
soon it was time to decide whether or not to have another child. Well, on the second child, uh, we had amniocentesis, which had, was so new when Andrea was born that we hadn't even been told about it. By this time, I loved Andrea so much that I, I couldn't stand the idea of aborting a, a, a child with Down syndrome. And yet Hal, who is always very practical and sensible, said, Marge, Andrea should have a normal sister as a model. It wouldn't be fair to her or to us you know, to have a second child with Down syndrome. And I agonized over that decision, and I, I thank my stars that I never had to make that decision. I don't know what I, how I could have decided. The younger child, and you know, and, and then gradually sort of became the older child. Um, although Andrea would never stand to hear me being referred <laughs> that way. She's definitely the older sister, and she wants people to know that. It's like you know, having someone who's perpetually optimistic around all the time. Um, I mean, she always makes us laugh. Sometimes my friends call me up and ask what she's been up to lately because whatever she's, you know, she's always gotten into some situation or something exciting has happened. <laughs> she's really is able to um, encompass something close, the closest that I've seen to just pure happiness, and um, she just enjoys life so much, and I think it. The biggest thing she's done for me is put things in perspective, which is a giant thing to say, but she does it in, in tiny ways and in huge ways and constantly. floundered around as, you know, as the best we could. And we had all these theories as to what should be done. But we really didn't know what to do. They were totally out of control. <laughs> if they didn't like their dinner and we turned our back, we'd find, you know, a piece of meat sailing past our ear. <laughs> if we took them somewhere, they would run in opposite directions. They were, you know, they, they were wonderful, warm, lively, lovely children, but they were, uh, they really needed a little, a lot of behavior modification. And then uh, one day, uh, Becky Deutsch came into our lives. L. Rebecca Deutsch was a retired teacher whose interest in developmentally challenged children had made her something of a pioneer in the field. Now retired, Becky had been working part-time with seniors, but she missed young children. She never intended to work in a family setting, but once she met Andrea and her parents, she never looked back. What Becky said was that in her experience with dealing with many children with Down syndrome, she had found in each of them this sort of tug back to the womb, as she put it, this, this f not wanting to get out of the, you know, into the world. And they would much rather kind of lock in to their own world keep their lives as simple and effortless as possible. So what we had to do was keep pushing our children out, you know, with experience, with challenges, and so forth. When we went on outings, I loved to run away. I thought it was fun to have everyone looking for me and chasing me. When my parents tried to correct me, I would stand stiff and looked down at the ground. 
They thought I wasn't understanding them. But that was just my way of closing them out when I didn't want to hear what they were telling me. But when Becky came, wow. <laughs> she told mom and dad, Andrea is smart enough to make you think she can't understand. She does understand, but she doesn't want to mind. I think she came on my birthday, best present I've ever gotten. And we just, she didn't believe in, in segregated teaching. She believed in mainstreaming, so did we. That's what we were trying to do. Uh, she believed in early, you know, early stimulation. We should have done even better earlier, but we did the best we could. And you know, it, the whole thing you know, was, was a, a wonderful meeting of interests and minds when she came. She didn't treat Kay as normal and me as special. She just treated both of us as two little kids who needed to learn to behave. First, Becky insisted that Kay and I look at her while she was talking to us. She called that eye contact. Next, she insisted that we listen to her words. She called that mental focus. Then she said we must learn to be responsible for our own behavior. She called that self-control. I remember that she gave us lots of treats and happy times when we were good, but sometimes she had to get pretty stern when we were naughty. She said these three things, eye contact, mental focus, and self-control were the basis for all other learning. Happy birthday to me! Happy birthday to me! Happy birthday to me! Happy birthday to me! Sing it again, please. Happy birthday to me! Look at me. Happy birthday to me! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, dear Andrea! Becky believed that the mind is like a computer. You fill it with as much information and experience as possible, and then use physical exercise to help build the pathways of coordination. The Freedmans were already exposing their children to a rich diet of experience and stimulation, but now Becky stressed the importance of both discipline and a regular, structured, physical regime. One of the, the dramatic breakthroughs in Andrea's development was when she learned to ride a, a tricycle. She just couldn't get it, and she didn't want to get it. And one day, Becky tied her feet to the pedals and put her on a, uh, on a driveway which had a slight incline. Once she gave her a little push... And there was nothing Andrea could do, of course, but have her feet po follow the pedals and she suddenly realized she was pedaling and she was moving the tricycle and she was just you know it was just like sunrise on her face and she was so excited I did it I did it <laughs> and from then on it was never as difficult to teach it to teach Andrea something Oh, she, she began to want to learn. All the research indicated to Marge and Hal that people with Down syndrome tend to be great mimics. Why then, they thought, would one not want them to be surrounded by so-called normal children and mimic normal behavior and achievements? They decided that Andrea should be mainstreamed, included in the classrooms of regular schools. 
I was completely mainstreamed into a class of 60 regular kids who were taught by a team of three teachers. And the school imposed a condition on her admission, which was that she had to have an aide in the class. And they were going to choose the aide. Uh, and what we did was we introduced them to Becky, who insinuated herself into the situation. <laughs> Becky advised the teachers on ways to make the mainstream successful. And together, they developed techniques that worked really well. Becky decided she was going to be the aide to the teachers in the class. And so instead of having Andrea with an aide following her around, Becky was there to help all of the children in the class. Now this had a multi-faceted advantage because the other parents did not resent having a child with special needs in the class. Their own children were getting extra help in the areas where they needed the extra help. And so Andrea was included in the class. And the other thing that Becky did was that she trained other teachers, most notably Carol Fawcett. The idea is to keep the child on his or her cutting edge. We focused, first of all, on social issues. That was our main goal, focus on the behavior. If you're behaving like a student, even if you're not getting it all, that will come later. But you're learning to learn in an environment with people who are not as challenged. If a child behaves so that people are comfortable around her, she'll be accepted, even though she is slower to learn. When we get into academics, we try to use strengths. We try to do the adaptations that we do for each child around those strengths and keeping in mind that we want them to look like and feel like they're doing the work as similar as possible to the work that the other students are doing. We were very reluctant to have Andrea tested because if she were tested, uh, she wouldn't score well on a particular test. But uh, if they would just accept her as a person, she could achieve. And you just look at the child. You take away all the labels and you look at the child. Throughout Andrea's early school years, Becky and the Friedmans continued to provide Andrea with a wide variety of experiences and stimulation, with an ongoing emphasis on enhancing physical coordination. Andrea inevitably suffered some teasing at school. All the kids were like, tease me, which is not very nice. They would call me different names, like, retarded, retarded for you can't really think, that kind of thing. And I, that time, I did not know how to, to be an advocate, to be, um, to stand up on my own two feet and turn them off. I couldn't do that. I ran to Kay. And I guess one day some kids were teasing her and um, we were all sort of walking together in our various classes down to the playground. And she pointed me out and said, that's my sister. And you know, if you're mean to me, she's gonna beat you up. <laughs> and, um, I'm not sure how equipped I was to, to do that, but I would have you know, I would have given it my best shot. This is just the way kids are with each other. It wasn't particularly because Andrea had Down syndrome. It was because she was, you know, in the fourth or fifth grade. And that's what children do. And that was the whole idea of mainstreaming, to teach Andrea to live in a real world. Andrea attended a regular high school and graduated with her class. 
After graduation, Andrea was determined to go to college like all the other grads. And they wanted to enroll her in a special program for people with learning disabilities, but Marge didn't like the programs. And so Marge just enrolled her in regular classes. And what Marge would do would be to attend the first few sessions of the class, get permission from the professor to make an announcement, which was, is there anyone here who would like to earn some money helping to tutor Andrea? And there was always somebody, and she did very well. I think when she took child psychology, she got a B, didn't she, in the class, regular C's. Class? She got a C? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, I always think of it as B's. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and when she took the, uh, the, the course in, in drama, which we, th we thought would be an easy course for her, but when they s asked her to do a report on Medea, Medea we decided <laughs> it wasn't all that easy. But e even in that class, she got an, an, she a. Got an a. She got an A in that class. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thinking of a possible career in child care, Andrea volunteered at a child care center. By a strange chain of events, this led to a totally new career for Andrea. One day, uh, she was at uh, Hill and Dale Child Care Center, and uh, a couple walked in to enroll their child and took a special interest in Andrea. It, well, it turned out they have a child with Down syndrome, and the husband, uh, Craig Safin, wrote the music uh, for uh, Life Goes On. And Linda, his wife, uh, you know, is a wonderful, dynamic woman who took a shine to Andrea. And when she learned that the people at Warner Brothers, the directors and producers and writers, wanted to establish a panel of young people to give story ideas for Chris Burke, Linda made sure that Andrea was included in that panel. Andrea was sitting there at every session saying, Corky, that's Chris Burke's character, should have a real girlfriend with Down syndrome and I should be it. <laughs> and finally, uh, the second season, you know, uh, the uh, producer got a wonderful idea. He said, you know, Corky should have a real girlfriend <laughs> with Down syndrome. They invited several young women with Down syndrome to audition. And then they thought, oh well, Andrea had suggested it, they might as well include her. The casting director breezed by Andrea and said, oh Andrea, you don't have a script. Uh, let me go get you one. And Andrea said in a very loud voice that could be heard by all of the other <laughs> auditioners, I don't need a script, I know it cold. <laughs> Well, then she came out, and I, I said, well, what did they think? What was their reaction? Oh, she said, I don't know. I said, did they like you? I don't know. She said, um, the, the director said I was a real actress. I said, well, that's a good sign. She said, and they all stood up and gave me a stand and applauded. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a very good sign. From being a little girl, she's had that wonderful appeal there's just something about her that you just you just love. You love to be with her. Now, of course, I love to be with her and talk to her and, you know, play games and what have you. And there's some people just have that. It's like movie stars. You say, well, what makes them a star? It's just that something inside that gives you an emotional attachment right away. And uh, Andre has that. Even when I was little. And people asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up. I answered, a star. I wish I had a girlfriend, just like you. Sorry. I'm not. Nobody ever said that to me before. Really? Most people are afraid of me. Normal people are afraid because I'm Downs. Downs people are afraid because I'm too normal. This very special lady is tonight's Inside Story. Among her numerous parts, Andrea's appeared on Touched by an Angel and Walker, Texas Ranger, 
but never had she received as big a challenge as her role as a victim of abuse in Law & Order SVU. I've learned a lot about acting from watching her. He took my necklace. What did it look like? She gave such a, a heartfelt performance, our uh, producers started to cry. <laughs> if they hear me work, they may be like that. Hey, I, I didn't know he's a good actress. Series star Christopher Maloney admits he went in believing the stereotypes of her limitations. I must say that I was ashamed of myself. She uh, helped open my eyes, and uh, it, it was a good education for me. In 1998, she starred in a Turner Network Christmas drama called Smudge. Andrea fell in love with her co-stars at first sight. I read the story first to see what it's about. And then after that, I go back when I get the script. I read the lines. I say it over and over again about five or 15 times, whenever then I get it. Nothing much. It sounds like a small puppy to me. It's a very, very small puppy. Where? In my pocket. In your pocket? <laughs> Nothing much, just a small puppy in your pocket. Bring him here. Oh, let me see. Andrea's an absolute trooper on set. In the filming of Smudge, she had to contend with extreme heat during the day and getting soaked to the skin in a night shoot. I love acting, and I have, whenever I go act, I always have friends around me. And it's kind of like a second family or a third family, it doesn't matter. Some members of the cast of Smudge attended the Garth Homer Center for Mentally Challenged Adults. Andrea was an inspiration to them and an outstanding role model. If there's nothing I know, then it's the perfect Christmas. The realities of an acting career were very soon apparent. And like so many other young L.A. actors, Andrea has a day job. She works in the accounting department of a large firm of lawyers. When you show Andrea how to do a job, she does it exactly the way you show her. If you don't show her correctly, then she'll make a mistake. But if you show her correctly and watch her do it once, she's got it. She doesn't forget. She's very cheerful. She always comes in with a smile. Uh, I've said many times, if the staff of our firm had the attitude that Andrea has, um, we would go really far because um, she, there isn't a job you know, too big or too small that she won't do. She's going to get the job done, whatever you give her. She has a wonderful spirit and wonderful attitude. And it's, uh, it rubs off. Yeah. We live in a place where public transportation is almost impossible. And it was it got to the point where we were either going I was going to have to chauffeur the rest of my life or we were going to have to move. And I got this bright idea that wouldn't it be good if Andrea also uh, got a license so that we wouldn't have to drive her around. And of course, everyone thought I was mad, uh, but I'm very <laughs> stubborn. And uh, I said, we're, we're going to try it. Everything else we've tried uh, seems to have worked. And our theory is that Andrea can do anything that a normal person can do. It just takes her a little longer. First she practiced with me, and, and I freaked out. And then I practiced with my mom. She started yelling. And then she practiced with Hal. I practiced with my dad, but he freaked out. And uh, even calm, you know, uh, Hal uh, began getting explosive. <laughs> and then they uh, may have this driving down westward and then it took me about two years to get my license. 
I took my driving test and I passed on the first try. That's my sister, she's a little more different. And one of her favorite lines now is, I have Down syndrome, but I passed my driving test on the first try, and my sister, who is so-called normal, had to take it twice. <laughs> Uh, the thing about Andrea's driving is that she observes the letter of the law. She's one of the few people I know who comes to a full stop at a stop sign and looks in both directions before proceeding. And people are very impatient about people who observe the laws. Yes. And uh, indeed, there was one man who literally rammed her car. I want to make sure that all the the cars were clear, so I could make a left turn. The guy behind me was so impatient. He kept honking at me, and I kept annoying him. And when he ran into me... She immediately got out of the car, showed him her driver's license and her insurance, and asked for his. But Andrea was totally unfazed. She did exactly what she was supposed to do. Oh! Can I see your driver's license? Sure. I'm uh, terribly sorry about this. While living at home, Andrea carried on a very independent lifestyle. She does all her own shopping, banking, laundry, and even cooks for her parents twice a week. Looks like you got a real, a real dinner going for us tonight. Oh, yeah. This is called Chef Andrea. This is called Chef Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> it smells good, whatever it is. Then whatever it is, you want to Oh, now I'm very hungry. Good. Okay, I'll tell mom that dinner's almost ready. Not ready yet. Not ready. Not okay. before I do it. Okay. And the bunch. Well, see you later. Au revoir. Ostrich burgers. You don't like them. I don't like ostrich burgers. <laughs> Thank you. Sounds good. Many people would say that a uh, sense of humor, which is an important part of dealing with a challenging project like this, is absolutely essential. Many people also say that children with Down syndrome have a difficult time with humor. I've seen Marge and Hal actually teach Andrea many of the levels of humor that some people would say is not possible. Well, I, I think it's just the way we are. It's, it's an expression of our personalities that we like to have fun. Uh, Hal has a great sense of humor. Uh, he refuses to take life too seriously, he says, as that if you're not having fun, what's the point? And his humor and mine kind of dovetail. We understand each other very well, and we, lo we love teasing each other. And uh, from the very beginning, we teased our children as well in a loving way. 
And of course, they, they were incensed by this when they were very little. Small children do not enjoy teasing because they take themselves very seriously. But as they grew, they began to understand that this was an expression of love, an exercise in fun, and they began joining in. So we were at this hunting lodge and, you know, we invited her to go on a walk with us and she wasn't really interested in doing that. And we said, we'll be back for lunch. And she said, well, what time are you going to be back for lunch? And we said, we'll be back around noon. So we got back at about quarter after 12. Didn't, couldn't find her anywhere. And we found a note by the front door saying, um, you said you are going to be back at noon. I've been waiting. It's 12.02, and I'm going to lunch. <laughs> Every week, Andrea attends a very special drama club. This, in truth, started off as a sort of a wouldn't it be fun if, because Drea had been doing it for many years. Drea's been studying with me for a long time. And then her mother said, you know, she's got these friends that would probably enjoy this too. This is. Because of an unusual formation of the palate, many people with Down syndrome find it difficult to speak clearly and to make themselves understood. We work on our scenes literally the same way as I would work with any other actor. It just takes more time, that's all. To be or not to be, that's the question. Where is nobody in the mind? to suffer things and error from our western forces. Oh, take on again, see our trouble and pulsing in them. To die, to sleep, possess, to dream. I dare that rob before the sleep of death. What dreams may come where well, we have suffered of this mortal coil must give us pause. Yes. <laughs> we found that the exposure to acting, um, I want to say to art, because to me that's what it is, they respond the way any human being responds not differently, the same, and they grow, just as any human being grows who is exposed to art. The early years of constant introduction of new ideas and experiences have made their mark. As an adult, Andrea is self-motivated to try new things. Currently, she enjoys ballroom dancing lessons and recently enrolled in a course in computer graphics. Leisure time is filled with activity. Sewing, exercising, emailing friends all over the world, going on double dates and trips to the movies. So what are your plans for the summer? What are you going to do? Ever since she started to become interested in, in boys, which was at a pretty young age, um, she was always interested in um, boys without disabilities. And I think it probably had to do with the fact that she was a little bit more advanced. And then she, the first kind of boyfriend she had didn't have Down syndrome. She was always sort of very impatient around kids with Down syndrome until recently some of them have really been catching up or she's been interacting with kids more um, at her level of, of ability. Um, you know, but she would sort of always pursue sort of, you know, quote unquote normal guys. And it's been really hard for her. Um, I think to reconcile, you know, sort of who is attracted to her in a romantic way, or and who's giving her attention for another reason. I was dating a lot of all the wrong men who were kind of not being very nice to me. Some never get me in trouble. Some of them um, decided it was fun taking advantage of me. Some would go across the line saying I have sex with me and I, I wasn't ready and they would force me. 
I run away scared. I'm like, stop it. And I decided, well, I've been here before. It's not gonna happen anymore. I think she's like all of us. I mean, what she should want and what she really ends up being attracted to are different, you know, are two different things. Um, it's very hard. I can laugh too many times. Mm -hmm. Broken harder too many times. Andrea talks about her boyfriend, Will. And then we had this group, like the friendship group. We, we met there and we did things with the group. We had fun. And then um, I guess it kind of clicked in a way. We um, made friends for a long, long time. And I'm happy with him. But mostly he's my special boyfriend and I really love him. On December the 27th, 2000, Andrea moved into her own apartment. Living on your own is another big step. You have to learn to be independent. You have to learn to control your budget. Growing up is very hard to do. You have to change in so many ways. And that struggling is a very strong word to say because the more you struggle, the more you can frighten, the more you become scared. But you can have dreams, you can have futures ahead, being honest to yourself and to others. And that the more you work hard, and the things you want, you get them. Not only is Andrea a gifted actress, but she is an inspiration to people all over the world. Since 1991, Andrea has been speaking as an advocate for people with mental challenges. When I was born, you can be sure nobody predicted that I become an actress. Go to college. Lecture at Harvard Graduate School of Education. Work in a law office and drive a car. The doctor told my mom and dad I would not develop beyond the mental age of four or five. He said I would hit a plateau and stop learning. Yeah, right, doc. Well, I'm, I'm 28 years old, and I'm still learning new things every day. Plateau? Baloney. <laughs> the children that I have known and worked with have been incredible gifts to me, to their families, to their schoolmates, and I would hate, in general, for medical technology to get us to a place where all children are perfect. On the one hand, my, uh, I feel that these children add, bring so much to the world. Uh, they bring love, uh, uh, compassion, kindness, you know, wonderful qualities that they have, and they bring out the same qualities in the people around them. And perhaps we need people like that in our lives. On the other hand, if you ask anyone with Down syndrome if, if, they, would, if they like having Down syndrome, or if they wish this whole extra chromosome thing could be lifted from them, you will get universally the answer that they would love not to have the extra chromosome. And that's what makes it, for me, 
a very would be a very hard decision. But my instinct when I read these things about you can engineer genes and eradicate all kinds of illnesses or um, you know and you know these things that cause disabilities. Um, you know my my sort of gut reaction is well the world wouldn't be as nice of a place without people like Andrea. Um, you know, there's there's got to be a reason that these kids are born, and um, you know, I I just I don't know. I think they make the world a better place in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. So, but I I don't know. I mean, and but I think about what Andrea would want. You know, if she could have the the option of um, being normal, to quote unquote. And um, as happy as she is with who she is, I think she probably would want to be. So it's, because it's, it's frustrating for her, I think, in many ways. I call myself, so what if I had Down syndrome? So what if I look more slower? I can achieve, which I have. I've been on my budget ever since 96. I'm doing everything great. And it's going perfectly. I don't know. It's been important for me. Um, for our whole family. I mean, she's sort of, uh, she's changed everything, you know, in all of our lives. And, and for the better, I think. I don't think myself as Down syndrome. I think myself as, as having Up syndrome because I love myself and I love everybody around me.